Hey guys, it's C2 here, and I'm going to be doing a quick color correction tutorial. And uh, what you see in front of you is what we're going to create. And I'm going to go through some of the different, uh, like, gradient map, photo filter, things like that. And I'm going to explain them a little bit more in-depth than just what the average user thinks they do. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun just kind of watching and creating this. There's a lot of things you can pick up and use on your own. Uh, color correction, to me, is a crucial part in any design, and whatever you're doing, you need it. Um, unless you're like a photographer a lot of photographers use it but I mean if you got one of them like fancy four thousand dollar cameras you probably don't need it but if you're just an average user they're really nice especially with uh, renders you can bring out colors and uh, if I show you guys here this is the render that we start with and then uh, when we're all finished it will look like this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all the delete all of these and we're gonna get started <coughs> excuse me I'm a little bit sick so just bear with me um I'm going to run through these really quick. We have uh, curves, which is what we're going to use. I'm going to go through the ones we're going to use. So if I was to go through all these, it would be a whole tutorial in itself. But um, curves, that increases and decreases contrast. Vibrance brings out the low colors. Hue and saturation can change the hue to any spectrum. And the saturation also, also brings up the saturation throughout the whole image. Uh, photo filter is just uh, I don't really know how to explain it it's like you took a new layer put it to color and then change the opacity it's just a lot quicker um, and gradient map it maps different colors to your, the area that you want them to be so we're going to use all of these and uh, we're going to get started with curves and uh, one of the, a little nifty thing up here is the presets you can just run through these like you got like color negative RGB uh, darker, increased contrast, blah 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 blah. Um, what we're going to use is we're going to use. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to use. What one do I want to use? We're going to use medium contrast because the increased contrast is a little bit too much, and the linear contrast is a little bit too weak. <coughs> Excuse me. So the medium contrast works really good for us right now. And uh, what that does is it just makes the blacks a little bit blacker and the whites a little bit whiter. There was no racial pun intended there, so don't take it that way. Um, and then the next thing we're going to use is vibrance. And like I said, that brings out the low line colors in here. So like the blues, because that's the only color in this render. Because uh, a blue is a good base color. And because you can change it to any color that you want on the spectrum, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect it too much. So I don't know what the perfect one to use is, but I've had good 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 like experience using blue so I just use it in all my renders because I just change all the colors in Photoshop um, what we're gonna have this as we're gonna have this in the 25 range and uh, saturation we're gonna have that 10 so like I said vibrance brings out the low colors in the render um, the next thing we're gonna use here is gonna be hue and saturation and uh, we're you see change all the colors it's like a little mini rainbow on your screen like if you just want to like I don't know, do a self-induced, like, uh, I don't even know, just mess with your mind. Just, like, go down here. Near. Near. Okay. Uh, no more screwing around. We're going to have this at uh, negative 10 because if you see, it's, like, seeing, and then it's, like, blue, and it's, like, purple. But I want to lean towards the lighter side of the blue. So what that's going to do is it's going to change. Um, it's going to start towards the highlights. Just going to change the highlights and give some more visual interest. Uh, saturation we're gonna put that up to five and then lightness as you see it goes like this Ner black white black white no racial pun intended um, I'm gonna have this at one just so I can feel like I did something and uh, I don't usually play with lightness too much and if I do I always put it up because if I bring it down then it affects my uh, final filters and it just it kind of deletes that true white that is in the image um, the next thing that we're gonna use is I believe photo filter and uh, you have all of these different beautiful colors but for this one we're going to use the deep blue and what that's going to do is it's going to put a little blue tint on all the shadows and just kind of make it more thorough uh, last thing is gradient map <coughs> excuse me and if we were to put this on soft light you'll see that it uh, affects the shadows negatively and it makes them lighter so we just want to click this little reverse button here and then it all turns dark and we're just going to put this to 15% opacity. And uh, when I was doing this earlier, because I messed up the recording, um, 
what I did here was I was just screwing around and uh, I found out something really cool and what this was was I went to gradient map and then a uh, rainbow and then I believe I had it on screen yeah screen and um, that just merged these layers and as you can see there's like a whole like gangbang of colors in here and they're all really bright and um, what I did was I just took a little brush like this and I just went like this and uh, now there's more hue and visual interest in it that is my favorite word ever um, I'm just gonna bring this down and we'll have the blur distance at like five if I get it there five works all right and uh, that just brings more hues and I don't know like a cool little blur I think that looks pretty cool. I don't know about anyone else, but I think it's cool. And uh, also another thing you can do that I like to do is uh, take your color picker, pick a color on the render, and then um, all you can do is you, if you have like a little brush, or you can just go like this, is, uh, let me see, go like 50. Just kind of go like this all around the render. It doesn't look like much right now, but then when you go to filter, blur, motion blur, and you put it all the way up um, it just gives like a little blue tint going through it and I think it, it's just one of those little extra filters and p pieces that people just don't bother doing now and uh, a lot of that little like your whole work is in the details and when people skip over the details you know your work just looks like crap so little details like this can really put you over the edge especially against your competition like, I don't know, I would almost compare it to, like, knowing a foreign language when you're going for a job interview. Um, it's just kind of a lost art with just doing, just following through with all the little details. A lot of people just rush through their work, and they don't over, I mean, they don't double check it or anything like that. And, um, yeah, so there's your basic color correction. I'll show you guys what we started with again. And it was, like, dull, bland, yucky. And then in Photoshop, we made it look beautiful, brighter, more inviting, and it bring a lot more interest into the piece especially with the little details and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this I'll probably be doing more little tips and tricks like this in the future uh, thanks for watching see you guys soon peace